Okay, so it is uh, tutorial. I will give theory and I will give you insight of theory. Uh, but also along with the theory, there will be two absolutely explicit algorithms, uh, A and B. Algorithm A input two vector field given in any coordinates, describing a 2 3 5 distribution near point P, which is given. Output the Cartan tensor at a point uh, P. And algorithm B, homogeneous left invariant 2 3 5 distribution, which is induced by a dog five dimensional algebra. Five dimensional algebra and dog is generating two plane P. It has, a, as I explained, can, you, uh, can be described by three by five metrics, and these are numbers by 15 numbers. So output, uh, input these 15 numbers, output the Cartan tensor of the homogeneous left invariant distribution, which is used by this and those algebra. In the second algorithm B, it is, uh, we do not use algorithm A, moreover, we do not realize, uh, we do not realize by vector fields, uh, the, uh, this in dog algebra AP, and we do not uh, realize by, by vector field the distribution, we just compute Cartan tensor. So I'll explain this, but first I need some uh, more insight, calculational insight on the theory simultaneously proof. Uh, and we will see how the algorithm works. Okay, so uh, need more summation on the first two steps. Let's take any, any linear approximation. But by linear approximation here, I mean, you know what, uh, what I explained. It is two vector fields expressed in certain local coordinate system, x1, x5, uh, such that each of this n1 and n2 have a quasi homogeneous of degree minus one with respect to natural weights, one, one for x1, x2, two for x3, Three for x four and four five. Okay, so and we need that uh, they are generated that these five vector fields are linearly independent at their origin. So you know from my lectures that uh, crucial is here this operator L N, which brings a pair consisting of a vector fields and two by two matrix dysfunctional entries to this pair of vector fields. The bracket of that is L one and two. One pair plus another pair multiplication of L1 and 2 by the matrix uh, H. It is convenient to, uh, you know, uh, to be short and precise to define Ln equivalent. Thus, two pairs of vector fields will be called Ln equivalent if their difference belongs to the image of this operator. And what all what we need is to construct an exact normal form. Preferably good normal form, I gave definition of the size of what is good normal form, which respect uh, uh, the homogeneous symmetry, quasi homogeneous symmetry of n of degree zero. Uh, well, uh, uh, with respect to this ln equivalent. Uh, so, as I said, on the first steps, n1 and n2 is an arbitrary symbol, need for the approximation. But uh, later, and I'll explain why it is. Uh, not necessary, but almost if you want to, to have something good in your head, necessary to take my symbol and not one symbol and uh, symbol and not any other uh, symbol. So conceptually, you can continue to work with any symbol. I'll speak about this later. So what we do? Uh, first steps, uh, actually, uh, it, it is the same as uh, in all equivalence problems, uh, how we deal with all equivalent problems in any part of mathematics. We are doing step by step. We want exact normal form, but first we uh, construct certain preliminary normal form, and then we see what transformations uh, are preserving this uh, preliminary normal form in order to obtain uh, another preliminary normal form, which is will be more close to exact normal form will contain less parameters and so on, so on. And Cartan may, this does actually conceptually, ideologically, absolutely the same step by step reduction, preliminary normal form, and uh, next preliminary normal form after 
verified what the sum of the previous one and so on. So all as you know, well, the only thing the, the difference is that he does it uh, without coordinates, just uh, finding the he finds the normal form uh, for a co-frame. Uh, uh, C differential one form the standard distribution and I look new coordinates. Okay, so uh, so the first linear normal form one is absolutely uh, trivial. So we uh, can always this five vector fields and one and two the brackets and next brackets and four and five uh, uh, are linearly independent. So we can express any two vector any vector fields uh, as a linear combination of this and one and five is one strong coefficient. We do it, and now we can. Uh, uh, we can kill uh, all the parts, the parts uh, of this N1 and N2 and N3. Uh, well, without changing the parts of this N4 and N5. Uh, we can do it in a very, very simple way. We take a vector field, and not general form, but just a linear combination of N1 and N2. This function coefficients F1 and F2, and then modular N1 and N2 we can this. Uh, which allows to take F2 and F, uh, F1 and F2 in order not to have this part with N3. And what about N1 and N2? So for that, we have here this matrix H, which can, uh, due, to, due to it, we can remove N1 and N2. So what remains is only uh, this part, uh, this N4 and N5. As soon as we got, this normal form we have to see what transformation what that i preserves this delivery uh, normal form say that it is preserved delivery normal form means that the oper our operator ln brings this pair uh, that vector field and two by two with its h this functional entries to a pair of vector fields which has this preliminary normal form one and it is easy compute that what preserves general form of that H for preserves uh, is uh, here. So it is uh, F4 and F5 are arbitrary, uh, no constraints on them. And uh, uh, F3 is also arbitrary. But F1 and F2 in the matrix H depends in this way on F3. The proof is obvious. We express that in general form in this way, and the proof follows from this obvious uh, brackets. Other equations? Omid? Yes, I don't think, I mean, if anybody have, huh? has a question, they can ask. Yeah, it's all good. A, a bit more loud if possible. Okay, uh, everything is fine. Uh, I don't know if anyone has a question, they can ask. Uh, okay, good. Yeah. So I'll go further. Now, since we have in the preliminary law form one, we have just this. So all the work reduces to two by two matrix uh, with, uh, with functions A11, A12, A21, and A22. Uh, so. No, no, I, I'd like to. to, to... To ask a little question, uh, yeah. Misha, I, I probably don't understand. So, yeah, yeah. You, you, you want to somehow normalize a two, three, five distribution. Yeah. But now we are taking any two vector fields, V1, I'm V2. I'm taking any two vector fields, V1 and V2, which describe this distribution. Ah, it's not N1 and N2. Ah, no. Okay. Oh, okay. I'm taking any vector fields and one and two. You know from our lectures that what can we do is to bring uh, the homogeneous, uh, quasi homogeneous parts uh, of V1 and V2 to uh, a normal form, which is uh, just a modular image of this operator. So yeah. any quasi homogeneous part we can kill everything which is in the image of this. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So this is, will be, uh, I'm working now on, uh, it, is, it is not distribution, it's just pair of vector fields. I'm working this normal form for a pair of vector fields, V1 and V2. Uh, 
two. Well, okay. and uh, so I'm I'm looking what can I do with them, model of this operator. I need I call it an equivalent, just model of the image of this operator, and I want to construct exact normal form. It is the way, and you know from the lectures that if I succeed and if the normal form will be good, that then what what we need for the normal form of two C five distribution. So these uh, claims, they reduce our equivalence problem with LN equivalence to the- Isha, Isha, so, yeah. sorry. So that, that's the point I don't understand. So you say V1, V2 are generators of the distributions or not? A, 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 this A1, 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 No, V, V1, V2. V2. No, these are arbitrary two vector fields, arbitrary pair of vector fields. So what's the relation to distribution? So because your primary... distribution, our normal form will be first vector field N1 plus V1, second vector field N2 plus V2. Fine. Okay, I understand now. So you, you take a distribution given by non-homogeneous things and you have... Yeah, I know. I, I, I do not repeat here what was in the lectures, but okay. uh, good, good. Lectures, you know, so we can... It's the Alicia theorem that we can describe uh, any distribution by vector fields. V1 is uh, first vector field V1 plus terms, quasi, quasi homogeneous terms of degree zero and bigger, second vector field N2 plus terms, uh, quasi homogeneous terms. No, no, it's okay. Thank you. Now, now, now with you. Fine. Uh, good. So we. So, but now I forget about distribution. I'm working just uh, here for some moment, uh, some time just with uh, pairs of vector fields and the, the LN equivalence reduces to uh, equivalence uh, uh, of the following matrices. So what appears, it is immediately follows from the previous claim that we have to consider this operator, which brings three functions F3, F4, and F5. I don't know if it is this a way to match the previous notation. So this two by two vector expansion. And now I want to, and, and now everything reduces to uh, normalization of this two by two matrix, this uh, functional entries by the image of this operator, which I denoted MN. So we have here, Three, three free functions, F3 and F4 and F5 are of our choice. Mm. But here we have in the matrix four functions. It has four uh, functional entries. So let's say that two, two by two matrices, these functional entries are equivalent if there are differences in the image of this operator. And now the problem reduces to constructing the normal form with respect mm. to this equivalent. And now to go further, I need a good choice of N1 and N2. Later we'll discuss, except conceptually I can take other symbol, but I will take this symbol N1 and N2 for further calculation. And it has advantage which I will use throughout all the further calculations. The advantage is that X1 times N1 plus N2 times N2 is the older vector field. Uh, and it is very convenient vector field. This is an advantage which will be used all the time. Okay, so the next, so this next claim is that I can bring any two by two metrics uh, uh, by this equivalence uh, to this form, uh, so that uh, uh, Q transpose times vector x one x two is zero. This means that the matrix you have these two terms in some functions, S1 and uh, S2. And the proof of this uh, thing is very simple. I will take, I will take F3 zero and, and I will control what I want just by F4 and F5. Then what I have in the matrix. So this is, uh, by, so arbitrary two by two matrix can be changed by, by this matrix uh, with arbitrary F4 and F5. And to get this normal form, I get an equation that E over vector field, X1 divided X1 plus X2 plus this one, X2 by DX2, applied to F4 
is equal to something which belongs to the ideal generated by x1, x2, and the same, uh, and one more equation for f5, the same equation, and these equations are solvable. Uh, it is trivial uh, that they are solvable, so I can do this preliminary normal form too. Mm. And moreover, I can find uh, that and uh, that and uh, I can find this uh, F3 and 4 and 5 to have computational formulas in order to reduce uh, to preliminary normal form 2. So, uh, uh, well, I'm taking the PRCC as a proof F3 is equal to 0 and we can compute F4 and 5 and after some work, we obtain that uh, we can get this preliminary normal form 2 with S1 functions as was and S2, how they depend on the arbitrary a priori coefficient uh, functions A11, A12, A21, A22. I have explicit formula for that. I do not need them for theory, but I need to need them for further calculation. Here are these formulas, uh, how S1 and S2 depend on Aij. Uh, for these formulas, I need operators T1 and T2. Uh, and for this T1 and T2, I need operator T. So what is the operator T? T applied to a function. T brings a function to a function. And it brings a function F to a function F tilde such that F tilde plus other vector tilde applied to F tilde is F. Uh, if you write the composition of F uh, onto homogeneous part, homogeneous part of degree uh, with respect to x1, x2 coefficients are functions of z by 1 to 2. So we get an explicit formula in this terms for f t. This is the operator uh, t and t1 and t2 are composition of t with n1 and then 2 corresponding to it. It is requires a bit of work. You can do it with an exercise, this formula. Mm -hmm. We have preliminary normal form 2. We have, to, we have to see in general way what F3 and 4 and F5 resolve this preliminary normal form. I took here as a proof F3 is equal to zero. What will be if I take an arbitrary F3? This is preliminary normal form three. Ah, yes, also I can, I, I have explicit. No, I went further, where is it? Yeah, preserving preliminary normal form two. That is working preliminary normal form two here, and what is yours? Okay, so F3, I took it zero F3, but now it's arbitrary, and it's very easy to, uh, to calculate claim five in the same way using the older vector field that what F3 and F4 and F5, which preserves the preliminary the normal form two, have this form. They are, this triple F3 and 4 and F5 is parameterized by arbitrary function H of all variables, and also by function uh, alpha 1 and alpha 2, uh, which do not depend on X1, X2. Uh, so they come, this function comes as a solution because the solution of the equation E over vector field applied to some function is a given function in the ideal generated by x1, x2. This uh, equation has infinitely many solutions because uh, uh, we can take uh, add to any solution a function which doesn't depend on x1, x2. It's also a solution of corresponding homogeneous equation. <laughs> e, applied to a function, uh, e applied to this function is zero. <coughs> <laughs> That's how the alpha one and alpha two uh, come here. The proof is also very simple. So this is what preserves, and now how what preserves x? So what we can we do uh, with this f three and f four and five, which preserves preliminary normal form two, in order to obtain the next preliminary form three? <coughs> <coughs> so what we can do instead of these equations. Uh, only these equations will be zero, it's normal form two, but we can also make the trace of the matrix is equal to zero. So then our matrix will have uh, this form 
And the proof is again very simple. It's again it uses sedimentary properties of the older vector chain. So this is what we can do. And we can again write a formulas. So we, this is preliminary normal form uh, two, and this is preliminary normal form two. And we have those operators, the one, the two, and here is L. <coughs> okay, so this is preliminary normal, normal form three. What about exact normal form? We have to know what reserves preliminary normal three and calculation shows that what reserves F3 and 4 and 5, these three functions which deserve preliminary normal form 3 are parameterized by three functions, alpha 1, alpha 2, and beta, uh, which do not depend on x1, x2. They depend only on the variables z, y1, and y2. And F3, L4, and 5 are parameterized in this way by alpha 1 and alpha 2. Uh, here is uh, Formula for R1, so it depends on alpha 1 and 2. Here is the formula for I2. It's again very simple computation of what is what is preserved when you have a lower form 3. Uh, here is the proof of this claim. Uh, uh, you can write it, it's very, very simple. Again, we are uh, working all the time with the owner vector. Well, and now what we can do with this freedom? So now we have. Uh, now, what x for uh, normalization is just three functions of z, y1, and y2. Uh, so, uh, and here we have to calculate something. Calculation takes some time, but they are not hard. That we can replace our f. What is f? Is there? Is this in normal form three? This is just one function f. And what we can do with this function is to uh, add to it delta f, and here is delta f. Uh, well, uh, and this delta f is a polynomial with respect in x1 and x2 of degree not bigger than 3, whose coefficients depend on the other variables z, y1, and y2 in this way. Oh, uh, uh, well, so uh, it is straightforward calculation and uh, nothing. Uh, Hard, just takes a bit of time, half an hour to compute, maybe an hour to compute uh, these formulas uh, for delta f. Well, and so what can we do now? So what can we do by f adding to it this delta f? Delta f is a degree three polynomials. Well, it is, it is, if we do not restrict ourselves to uh, if our purpose is not only Cartan tensor, but also deeper invariants beyond Cartan tensor, then uh, we do not restrict ourselves to work with fixed degree of quasi homogeneity. So here are arbitrary, arbitrary function f, which has to be normalized uh, by delta f of this form. So of course we can, since here polynomial of degree not bigger than three in x1, x2, we cannot change term which has kept in x1, x2 higher degree, uh, but we have to, uh, have to somehow normalize these terms. And this is uh, how the idea of that what was in my lectures, and you have it in the first lecture, comes out after a bit of uh, your equity class. So the next claim. Uh, so we have equivalence now of functions. Is, uh, f is equivalent to f tilde if there are differences of this form. Uh, well, and uh, the normal form is with respect to this equivalent is exactly the ideal i uh, whose generators I uh, you find in my uh, first lecture. It requires a proof. Require didn't explain here. It requires some work. Uh, some work, but the work is not difficult provided you know certain techniques to work with claims like that. And therefore we have now, now it's normal form for 2, 3, 5 distribution. Two, and we know that 2, 3, 5 distributions, it is one Carré way plus uh, uh, quasi homogeneity with respect to ways 1, 1, 2, 3, 3 involved in Volcaré days, uh, all this uh, uh, 
stuff I explained uh, in my lecture. So we know normal form for 2, 3, 5 distribution. It can be described by this pair of vector cube V1 and V2, which differs from its linear approximation by these uh, terms. And in my, for, my, uh, for my symbol, uh, these brackets are simply d by d by 1 and d by d 1, 2, just uh, up to coefficients minus 3, which is uh, not important. So you can assume that here is d by d by 1 and here is d by y2. And, and the function, which is now normalized to, the idea, to my ideal i, and it is exact normal form with respect to any equilibrium. As I said, the proof requires some work, but if you are interested in Cartan tensor only rather than also in deeper invariant, the work is much simpler. Because we know that we can, uh, so this is my standard notation in, in such a brackets for quasi homogeneous parts of degree one, two, three, so on. And we know it has to be checked, it's corresponds to the virtual counters, but it has to be checked, and it's easy that we can kill this part, this part, and this part. So up to, uh, well, up to equivalence, uh, equivalence uh, that I define it as zero. But what can we do with this guy, F4? Uh, well, and uh, so the claim is very simple that. For Cartan tensor, we have to normalize not the whole F, but only its homogeneous part of degree four after homogeneous parts of degree zero, one, and two are killed. Only quasi homogeneous part of degree four. And it is very simple uh, because uh, uh, the ex within quasi, uh, quasi homogeneous part of degree four. Uh, the normal form is uh, polynomial uh, in x1, x2 with numerical coefficients. This is Cartan uh, tensor, and, uh, and, and moreover, uh, the formula is trivial if we have no uh, in this F, and we know that we can do it quasi uh, homogeneous parts of degree 0, 1, and uh, 0, 1, and 2. No, uh, 1, 1, it starts. Uh, let us see. So here is quasi degree, uh, quasi homogeneous, and one and two, it is simple uh, minus one. Uh, here, all these brackets uh, is, uh, uh, is uh, quasi homogeneous of degree minus three, right? My, here is minus one, these brackets are minus three, but this matrix is quasi homogeneous of degree two, so it's minus one. Uh, so Cartan tensor appears when everything here, all this part has is quasi homogeneous of degree uh, three, so F must be quasi homogeneous of degree four. Uh, okay, for, so we can kill F uh, quasi homogeneous part of F of degree one, two, and three. We cannot completely kill uh, part of degree four, uh, but what remains of the part of degree uh, four is just the result of substituting uh, to this function y1, y2, and y3 is equal to zero, and it's x1, x2. And so what we are playing is a Cartan tensor. And here the proof is immediate, uh, because the proof is a corollary of a few very simple thing. Uh, the first thing uh, is the fact that delta f, uh, which can be at it's a polynomial of degree not bigger than three in x1 and x2. And so that uh, we can do nothing with this monomial. They are homogeneous of degree four, but also with respect to our weights, there is only x1, x2. They are quasi homogeneous of degree four. We can do nothing with them. Uh, well, and And we can kill the other monomials by delta f. They are in delta f. So what that's what we have to prove. And uh, that's all the other monomials of quasi, quasi homogeneous of degree four are in delta f. Delta f is a bit, a bit involved, but not that involved. Here is delta f. This is qij. But then uh, dimensional counting, it reduces this claim to the fact that, we, that it suffices to prove that 
the homogeneous equation delta f is equal to zero when all these guys q r j is equal to zero. Uh, so it holds that, that it holds uh, well. Let us see what are the degrees of uh, alpha one, alpha uh, alpha two, and uh, and beta uh, here. So here is uh, delta f is uh, of uh, is quasi homogeneous of degree uh, of degree four, and it follows that uh, alpha one and alpha two here uh, are quasi homogeneous of degree seven and and beta of degree. Six, yes, <laughs> beta would be six. Uh, so if we uh, on the level of what you have in degree four. So there is finite number of these triples, alpha one, alpha two, and beta, big number. And within this big number, if we prove dimensional counting, let's assume that we do not know nothing about G2, uh, the algebra G2, if we prove dimensional counting that for uh, was it homogeneous of degree seven, alpha one and two and beta of degree six, but do not forget that they depend only on that and y, y, y two. For example, what is alpha one, was it homogeneous of degree seven, the weights of z two, yes, you see, for example, z y one square, for example. Okay, so that delta f is equal to zero, we have to prove that it is it gives us 14 dimensional vector space for the triple alpha one, alpha two, and alpha and beta. And this, and what is it that f is equal to zero? It's the kernel of our operator Ln. And what is the kernel of our operator Ln? Exactly the Lie algebra is it expressed in vector P. So we check it. It's very easy to solve this equation. Uh, we can write explicit formula. This is the basis for alpha one uh, for two. And simultaneously, we have a parameterization of G2 as a kernel of this operator and the representation of G2 by vector P. What if we need a deeper invariant? So I wrote this section, uh, this two, slides, two next slides in view of what Dennis asked me that time. So you remember, Dennis, that you said something about some jo jo uh, deeper invariance beyond Cartan tensor as some sort of, as I remember the words there, what were the words uh, conformal curvature, yeah? Uh, Daniel, Cartan curvature. Yeah, but I don't know what is it, but I can guess. Okay. I don't know if I, my guess is right or not, but in any case, so let us discuss. So the Cartan, Invariant, uh, well, it is a basic thing about Cartan invariant. It's the invariant in the classification of quasi three jets with respect to this natural weight. But what about the usual jets with respect to weights uh, one, 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 one? Nobody canceled usual weights. It's also a good object. Uh, just usual weights when all we jets when all weights are equal. Uh, to one. All the time uh, we are saying about usual jets, but I mean degrees not only of coefficients, but taking into account this, uh, this part. So, for example, this monomial is one square divided by one, uh, with respect to all weights, one has to be not, uh, uh, here is not two, no, it should be not two. Not two, it has to be zero, two minus one, zero. Here is a mistake, should be not two. But anyhow, this. Uh, Degree of positive homogeneity minus what we have here. Uh, okay, so and quasi three jets are is a part of usual with respect to this jets five jets. And first, and why, if you speak about usual jets, uh, so then uh, then there are no invariants in usual four jets of of two three five distribution, but they are in five jets. And the formulas, what I give you, is give you also normal form also uh, for usual five jets with respect to usual effect to this way, it's one. Here are these formulas, the same normal form, but now it is a function G 
Vixe é Selma Alquad. Já tem os partos, e já acabou de ler os polinômios, e for, é vixe descartar o tensor. Vixe defined, a tener variante é descartar o tensor, apto um single linear transformation of x1, x2. Uh, well, and, uh, but we have several other parts. So this part, z times homogeneous polynomial, so we see it in x1, x2. It, uh, it is also uh, in uh, has with respect to weights 1 degree, uh, degree 4 here. Everything here has degree 4, but it has bigger degree with respect to this weights, one, one, two, three, three, it has degree five, two plus three, five. The same here with respect to, uh, with respect to weights one is this degree four with respect to, uh, with respect to uh, this weights of degree uh, six. And also this part, they are from my idea, they are just from my idea, it follows. And also this part is numbers R1, R2, and W. Uh, I'll say, you'll see now why they you know by blue. Uh, so here, uh, here we have, uh, we have uh, quasi degrees for this part. Uh, degrees with respect to this weights, bigger seven, seven, and here eight. Here is eight, because Y has degree C. C plus one, four, and square eight. Here is seven. Uh, okay, so this this part, so uh, starting from uh, everything beyond this F four, is beyond Cartan tensor. These are deeper uh, deeper invariants. Now this Cartan tensor, uh, so is defined as an invariant up to no singular linear transformation of x one x two, because the constructed normal form is good. Remember my definition of good. In the first lecture, that it respects uh, uh, respects uh, symmetries of quasi degree uh, zero. Uh, but now we have here how many parameters we have here? I think ten parameters. Yeah, in beyond Cartan tensor, in the question of usual five jets, we have ten parameters. Yeah, uh, and what can we do with these parameters? They are not invariant. The tuple of these ten parameters is not invariant. Why they, it would be an invariant if we had no uh, had no this pass of G two. Uh, well, you remember this condition of G two corresponding to quasi homogeneity. But this we have this uh, five dimensional space, two dimensional for this part of this two, one dimensional for this part, and one dimensional for this part. And now this can invariance can be multiplied using uh, this uh, five-dimensional vector space. And how they can multiply it? A certain action uh, requires calculation, but the main thing is that this action depends on Cartan tensor. How they can be multiplied now is the formula of Cartan tensor will be, uh, will be involved uh, uh, well. And uh, so the claim is that for generic Cartan tells the meaning for loops. Uh, so this is the normal form. Uh, okay, so sorry, there should be a mistake, not C, but W1. Uh, uh, here is W1. Here is W1. Here is W1. Uh, uh, this is an invariant in Cartan tells us. So what C is a people. Uh, well, and so what can we do with this uh, other deeper parameter? So uh, this is. Homogeneous degree three polynomials, we can kill two terms using the two dimensional G2 part plus one. Here, using the algebra G2 part plus two, it's one dimensional, we can kill uh, again this means, sorry, here should be x1 squared, x2 squared. So this means here, x1 squared, x2 squared. Well, and, uh, and this r1, r2 uh, can be reduced to zero. We can kill them uh, using the two dimensional uh, part of G2, part plus three. It allows us to kill, provided that the tensor is, uh, is a generic. Maybe it's also true for 
Sometimes it ends up with three roots, like a good check. But of course, not for any Cartan tensor. For example, if Cartan tensor is zero at zero, if it's zero at zero, then you can do nothing with this part. With this part, with F3, it will be invariant up to a linear change of quantum. Okay, so do you believe, Dennis? Uh, You see what I wrote here. If so in, in Carton's uh, five variables paper, I mean, he has this oh. other ternary quartic, which incidentally he also calls G. So uh, I, okay, uh, once again, Dennis, I, I can cure the world. Yeah. So in Carton's uh, 1910 paper, he yeah. talks about a ternary quartic, um, which he also calls G. And so I think what you're what you're writing down is in correspondence with this G that Carton had. Um, yeah. But the, um, so it's yeah in total fifteen dimensional, um, and so when when I refer to the uh, the full Carton curvature, this fifteen dimensions is still not the full Carton curvature. So the okay, um, it's not the whole. But, but, I mean, it's 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 a it's a big part of it, and uh, but I see. Okay, I see. But thank okay, you. Um, maybe I'll, uh, I hope I have a possibility to discuss. More about, about that, but in any how probably you know, visit it's also important part of uh, part of complete system of environments, right? Yep. Because nobody counts on one. Right? Okay, so this is uh, yeah. So now, what we discuss it with Igor and uh, can we do a similar enough with another number? So not my number. For example, with the Mont symbol. Let us say that it is the Mont symbol. Conceptually, yes, if we can do some work with one important approximation, then, then we can do this any other important approximation. The, but practically not, meaning that uh, what will obtain will be a huge formula. Well, you just think you will not obtain it. You will be blocked uh, after, after uh, two weeks of working and getting nothing. Second thing is that, okay, let us see. So to explain this, so let's take this. Mod tensor. Yes, you can easily make it uh, make it in this way. So here is a normal form, primarily normal form with the mod with the mod uh, tensor. At, uh, again, what appears is homogeneous with the polynomials here, like in my approach. And you could say that it is another way to express Cartan tensor. Good, but not good because this normal form, unlike my normal form, it doesn't respect the group GL two. But absolutely zero to us, and, and in fact, it is quasi homogeneous degree zero symmetries of n. In the terminology of my lecture, this normal problem is not good because it doesn't respect this. And why it doesn't respect this? Because this quasi homogeneous degree zero symmetries of n are very unpleasant. They are not homogeneous, they have many nonlinear terms, you can easily calculate them. Still, you can avoid this difficulty and you can define a certain action uh, of GL2 uh, in, uh, in the space of R, R5, meaning R5 five coefficients of this one, but it will be a very involved, uh, involved action, not just a linear change of coordinates, very involved action. And if you want to, 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 to deal with uh, Complete normalization, deeper invariance. Uh, so, if you want to normalize, as I did this part, uh, then uh, to some idea, uh, I guess you will never be able to do it. Maybe I will, if somebody doubts, uh, I suggest to try. Uh, I, uh, I claim that nobody can do it, it's absolutely impossible. But theoretically, it's possible. What conceptually we can do. For one symbol, we can do for other symbol because for two three, five distributions, all, all symbols are the same. So uh, the main advantage, all this calculation is simple. So more and more, from time to time, ask me, so why? What is the reason that you have simple formula? And Igor also. So the answer is because this quasi homogeneous equals symmetries of my symbol, unlike other symbols, are also. So they are quasi homogeneous of degree zero. We need to work with this object. 
Ваша дивизия из Бетузисла, из Батковца, у Майси Мурт, я шел пробовать, а у Майси Мурт, за Хамаджиниуса, у дивизии, из Аспекта Вейс Олва, за Вейси Мурт, я шел Z symbol, but I cannot write Z symbol. Somebody else should do it. But better Z H symbol, because Z symbol, somebody will think it is that it is yours. And you and you prepare more symbol so far. Well, and uh, so maybe maybe if you agree with this uh, uh, stuff and you use it, then uh, then uh, I wouldn't be against if you call it Z H. In return, if I, as I hope, appreciate and understand and appreciate your mini course, I will call the invariant that you construct this body of wrong building on the Chinsky invariant, not the Chinsky invariant uh, to, to just use in your construction and a priori have now nothing to do with these distributions, but I will call it by a better name, for example, DZ, the wrong the length of DZ. A bit more depend on coordinates. It, it does not depend on coordinates. I mean, a symbol is just graded impotently algebra. So he, he... okay, that, that is that is why expressed as vector fields and one and two in my problem are vector fields. That is why expressed in vector fields, all symbols are diffeomorphic. Yeah. <coughs> maybe what, maybe better, better like, terminology is like normal form for a symbol, like Zhitomirsky normal form for a symbol. Something. Okay, no, of course, depend on the symbol. We have to, to have normal choice, choice with uh, normal form. We have to fix several mm -hmm. things. Uh, in first, in first term, the, the symbol because these are normal forms in coordinates. Uh, this normal form yeah. coordinates. Uh, well, okay. and, uh, well, one word about this, you know, to say, to say, Igor, Igor, to say that or there is only one symbol is the same mm -hmm. to say that there is, uh, that all vector fields which vanish at the origin on a two, on a two, say, that vanish from the origin, I have linear approximation with identical matrix, they, mm -hmm. they, they, there is only one vector field because they are, all equivalent, uh, all vector fields with this singular, which vanish at the origin and, and have a, and whose uh, linear approximation is defined by identity matrix is, uh, is uh, they are all equivalent, like symbols, there is only one symbol, and there is only one such vector field by the equivalence. But what is called by other vector field is vector field x1 d by x1 plus x2 d by x2. Nobody calls by all your vector field, vector field x1 d by dx1 plus uh, um, sine cube x d by dx2 and so on, equivalent to it. There is uh, by all your vector field, uh, uh, all people mean x1 d by dx, just linear part to which can be reduced. So there is a name, all your vector field, there should be a name for my system. No, Euler vector field also is without coordinates, it's just on, on a vector bundle. It's a generator of homotative vector right. bundles. You don't, you you don't need a vector field in a Euler vector okay. field in a canonical form and so on, so on. Okay. Uh, okay. okay. In my approach, uh, I use coordinates. So I need coordinates, you know. So, uh, so in the approach is when you do not need coordinates, you can. You can do whatever you want. So what is Cartan tensor? I can, I can say 
the Kantan tensor is R5 modular certain action of G2. That's it, that's Kantan tensor. R5 modular certain action of R2. And, but then what? I want, I want to compute it, right? Mm -hmm. and, by the way, Kantan, though he has no coordinates, but also basis is not unique, and he has for a basis this normal form is polynomial of degree five. And why, no, why namely polynomial of degree five? Because that's a, something else, something else. That's a philosophical problem, whether you can reach everything without coordinates or not. That's a big, right, right. That's so a big question. Exactly. I, I would not say that we can understand everything without coordinate computations. Well, we can do many things. You can do many things. Maybe not I, but you can do. Many people here can do many things, uh, theorems and many, and many things without uh, local coordinates and, and, and some computation without local coordinates. But computation with local coordinates, as you see, they are very simple. As a result, I have uh, in my hands some tools, including this algorithm, I will formalize them, uh, very simple tools and very practical tools that I am using all the time. And I'm, not sure that uh, other people have uh, such a good tools for practical using. Also, by this tool in the lectures, I explained uh, that in local coordinates, some deep theorem, like main Cartan theorem, other theorems uh, about similar in the, the copy, uh, what can we do? The many things can be also theoretically, theoretically, uh, theoretically, theoretically proved as I did it, I proved some. Okay, algorithm A, so what we have, algorithm A, again, you put two vector fields, then a coordinate system, a point P, uh, in the neighborhood of each distribution is two, three, five, and output is Cartan tensor at P. So, very simple algorithm. Step one, of course, we have to see uh, the coordinates in order that P has a zero coordinate. Then, uh, this uh, three jet with respect to weights one, one, uh, to 3C depends on 5Z with respect to 4 weights 1. Uh, so uh, I, it is the 6Z of the coefficients of the field. Uh, so we can calculate this 5Z and throw away all other terms. We uh, do not affect uh, our time terms at all. So we need this 5, we work with 5Z with respect to usual Z. This is a trivial step. Uh, well, what is not some trivial, but a bit technical, but easy step is uh, to bring it uh, uh, to my symbol, to bring what? Uh, so the nil button approximation is defined by usual two jets with respect to this uh, weights, all, uh, all one with respect to usual jets. Uh, and uh, so we have to, to, to distinguish this symbol, this or that normal form for linear approximation. Uh, for me, what it makes we need to work with two jet of vector fields uh, in any coordinate. When we come in this coordinate, then it means any coordinate. We can use any coordinate as well. So, so uh, we take the two jet and then we have to change the coordinate so that in your coordinates assigned with this, uh, our way, there are no degrees minus three and minus two, uh, and quasi homogeneous degree minus one part. No, well, I am insisting that it is my symbol, so you can try to do the job with another symbol, but I doubt you can uh, do it well, uh, as I explained. And so, and uh, what is uh, what is here, it is possible due to the Laish theorem, and how to do it practically can be algorithmic. It's a bit technical, I have no time today to explain, but if somebody interested, I can uh, uh, show you how to do this. It's just not this subject. After that, we have to calculate the quasi homogeneous parts of this vector field in new coordinates, which is describe the distribution. Uh, uh, well, uh, already uh, now this quasi homogeneity, this is my notation for quasi homogeneity, this bracket, of degree 0, 1, 2, and 3, uh, quasi homogeneous parts of uh, higher degree do not affect our time tensor. So we, we have this, uh, this we have to have this polynomial, quasi homogeneous degree 0, 1, 2, and 3. And we know that we can kill W1, W2, and W3, uh, W0, W1, and W2. What appears here is uh, from here we have explicit formulas for Cartan tensor. Uh, well, and so how we kill this part? 
we have to take uh, a vector field z, z, and uh, a matrix, matrix H with functional indices. Everything is homogeneous of degree one, such that uh, our operator Ln applied to this pair gives uh, gives uh, plus w zero is zero in order to kill this guy. Uh, and so we have to find such as that H, and we know that, that this H exists. It is not unique, but it is unique just up to the most of vector space. Uh, this is uh, the part of G2 uh, uh, for the homogeneous part of degree plus one. We, it doesn't make difference uh, with that H we take how to do it practically. Okay, so if you do not want to use my formulas, uh, and I can explicit formulas for that. You can just ask Mathematica uh, to solve 48 equations with respect to 50 unknown differences. Too. If you do it quickly enough, but better way is to use a step by step reduction formula, which I, uh, which I gave. So we can find this ZH, that that H, and now instead of making a change of coordinates, identity plus that, uh, for change of coordinates, I'm obtained by H. It's much better to define properly with this easy exponential map, not only the vector field, but also for the pair ZH. Uh, well, uh, and uh, you understand how to define it. Uh, and then applying, applying this guy, uh, so it will change. Of course, it will kill, it will kill uh, this part, uh, and it will change this part, but it will change this part in a very simple way. Because uh, that's why we use exponent because we can use the basic formula. Uh, okay, you know well this formula. Uh, well, without matrix H, it may, will be just uh, the lead bracket. LV is the lead bracket uh, of Z and G, not more than Z. So it is very classical formula, but in fact, the general formula for the whole mathematics. How it's called? Uh, the name? Of work, I don't remember. Uh, in fact, we do not need to calculate this guy. We need only to calculate the terms of the homogeneous part of degrees one or three. I will explain it in a moment. Uh, then, after that, uh, so uh, so after that, we so here we do not have part zero. Now we are killing this part in the same way. <coughs> in the same way uh, that now we are taking that H everything. Uh, for the homogeneous root of degree three. So again, if you do not want uh, use a formula, formula you can you can uh, solve around hundred uh, and the uh, around hundred or hundred and twenty equations. The number of known is one more because of this uh, of this uh, one dimensional vector space, the uh, part of G two degree two plus two. Well, uh, okay, or better to use my formula step by step to save time for mathematics that is. Uh, uh, send it less than one second, otherwise it will be uh, two minutes. And we again make a change of exponential change of coordinates in order to kill quasi homogeneous terms of degree one. And we have uh, total degree two or three. New part, new. Now it was still, and now it is uh, F. So this again all the time will change this part, but we do not need to compute how this part will change. We have to compute only how this part. No change and no higher, to, higher order terms can be uh, taken away. Uh, so we, in the same way, and now why we do not need to, uh, to compute this way, this guy, because in the same way, taking that arch for the homogeneous of degree three, we are killing this term, but this term, uh, this, this term will not change. If we, uh, if we need different variants that can change, uh, here in this higher order term, uh, then we have to compute uh, more about this part too. Uh, but for concurrent terms, we do not need it. So we get this. And now we have an explicit formula how from this guy uh, to compute concurrent terms. So we just expect this guy in this form, which is immediately, and we have this formula about all the concurrent terms. So this is the first algorithm. Of course, I have a mathematical program for it. And uh, so uh, uh, it is tested on a thousand examples. That's already for years. It gets uh, perfectly used to a tensor, but uh, okay. 
приехали вот там, где Стас там, его как бы техно программе, но уже там были там прямо Азар, вот его вот там уже Алдерс. Азар Квешенс, на свой вход Алдерс МД, импульс и пай характеристик метрикс, и аутпут из картан тендер, о хомоджине, о стартом баре, о дистрибьюшн, и в тем, что в каким параметрах, что за картан тендер, for which, for this algorithm, we need to compute all this stuff, or due to all this part of this thing, as a kernel of our operator alien, restricted to corresponding degree uh, of quasi-homogeneity. We have to take a basis for each of this part. Here is the basis, uh, two-dimensional, plus minus three, two-dimensional, uh, to one-dimensional, uh, due to central part zero is zero, two, it's for the time by Basis provided by basis of G and two, and in my coordinates for my symbol here is, you see how good is this, how good is uh, how how good is this self a part of G and two. For most tensor it will be absolutely unpleasant, huge formulas, uh, nobody can deal with them. And for my symbol, you see how how good is it? That's as it should be. Oh, okay. What also we need is a structure structure equations. This is part one of structure uh, equation. So we have the same thing very simple in negative and positive part. Here is, here is how the central part uh, in a very simple way acts uh, on the negative and the positive part. And these are the lead brackets between the negative part of G2 and the positive part of G2. Uh, well, so now what? So what I am doing? We have a homogeneous 2 3, 5 distribution. This is, and we know this normal form, this cartan tensor in this normal form. And we know a priori it is given to us that it has five linear independent linear, sym linear symmetries, which generate a Lie algebra. And this Lie algebra is generated by generating plane A1 and 2, and A1 and 2 are A1 and A2 as a Infinite symmetries uh, as, a ve as vector fields, as vector fields. So the simultaneous, for example, the most absolute symmetry as vector fields. So at zero, they match B one at zero and B uh, two at zero. And for this guy, uh, we know characteristic matrix. And now we are taking quasi-homogeneous decomposition of this A one and A two. And since uh, symmetry, uh, symmetries, uh, we know that. Uh, that uh, after quasi degree two, these guys uh, are in G2, they, they are here. So we can uh, write this normal form, which shows uh, here with the Cartan tensor in this part for V1 and V2 and simultaneously for A1, A2. So this normal form for V1, V2 parameterized by Cartan tensor is for in quasi homogeneity C. And here we have. Uh, uh, two two by two matrices A and B for the central part. It must A one and my two must start with terms of degree minus one. If they, they cannot because they match V one V two and zero, they have no terms of degree minus two and minus three. So here we have two by two matrices A and B, and also two uh, parameters R I J R I J. So now what can we do? Uh, we can. Uh, we can apply this change of coordinates. This psi, they are from, uh, from G2. This is my basis uh, of G2. And uh, so with, uh, with any numbers, W, I, whatever are these numbers, uh, uh, we have the same normal form uh, for vector fields because they are in, in the kernel of LN. And so uh, this normal form, of, we do not pay attention to terms of quantity degree. Uh, more and more, it doesn't change. But what we can do uh, with this information here, matrices A and B, and these parameters, we can normalize. Uh, we can normalize them in this way. Okay, you see here was uh, a priori arbitrary matrices A and B, and now they will be traced as matrices A and B. And here uh, was. Uh, some number, some number, some number, some number. Now these two numbers here is S and here is. That's what we, uh, we can do. And now we can just cal calculate using the table structure relations for G2. We can cal calculate 
quasi homogeneous parts of ACD, A1, A2, A4, A1, 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 So we know everything, we know everything in blue. We know everything in blue and uh, here up to degree uh, zero. Well, what does it mean? We know everything in blue. Everything is blue is defined by the matrices A and B and these three parameters, R1, R2, and uh, S. Now we make a simple computation. This is quasi homogeneous -homo part of DB minus one. This is the entries of matrices A and B. From here, we get homogeneous DB minus two part of A4. And for this bracket, for the homogeneous part of minus three. But now we are using a characteristic matrix. We know what is it uh, from characteristic matrix. What is it? A1, uh, bracket A1 and four minus three. It depends only on uh, the last two columns of characteristic matrix. And these are these guys. Now compare these two formulas immediately. Uh, we immediately get. Uh, Formulas in terms of the answers of the realistic metrics for uh, matrices A and matrices B. The next step is computation of the next uh, level of this black is going to be by two and you know now parameters R1, R2, Rs. A bit more complicated formula. So now what we have? We have normal form for V1 and V2. This form up to terms of positive degree four and more. And this Kantan tensor here, in, uh, here uh, in three. And in the same coordinates, we know these guys. But now I put here terms of degree three. We don't know information about Eva priori. Uh, plus, here should be another mistake of degree four. four. It's a mistake here should be four. So we know everything in blue. Well, so what can we do? We do not know these guys. But we know that A1 and A2 are symmetry, so we have uh, information. We can relate this to dice of, uh, of quasi degree three uh, with uh, this coefficient of Cartan tensor. Uh, so these are the relations we have for phi 1, 3, and phi 2, 3 in this equation. These two guys, this, we know that this uh, system is solvable uh, because on this level it is solvable. A more, Moreover, solution of each equation is not unique. It is defined uh, up to two-dimensional part uh, of the algebra G2, part, parts of the V2, G2 plus two. Uh, okay, so uh, so we can take any fixed solution of this homogeneous equation, and they are linear. It's, they are linearly dependent on the coefficients of Cartan tensor. Well, and to add to them something what we do not know uh, from here. So this is from G2. Uh, these are symmetries of L from, this is from the, the algebra uh, G2. And now we are substituting, and now we are calculating, if we are calculating the terms of degree minus one in these brackets, and we already uh, use calculations in terms of degree minus three and minus two, But terms of degree minus one do, do not give you anything rather than certain relations, and these relations are equivalent as the same as the copy identities for the characteristic matrix. Because you remember, characteristic matrix is in general not unique matrix. We cannot substitute to it any fifteen numbers because there is uh, some the copy identity. Uh, they exactly occur here, and the time tensor doesn't appear, but calculating homogeneous part of the zeros of these guys. Uh, so we obtain a system for this uh, Q1, Q1, uh, for these two guys, and for these five coefficients of Cartan uh, tensor. It will be 12 equations uh, for nine unknowns, and we know that this system is solvable, and it has a unique solution, and we obtain formula. Explicit formulas, I do not write them, they are deep. Uh, for C, for zero, C, For L, uh, L, all explicit absolute matrices formula. Well, I do not write it all because they are big. How do you think? Probably you can never 
So in your life, a formula for coefficients of these coefficients of a timetable. How, how do you think? Will be one page enough for this formula? Huh? Dennis? Dennis? Hi. How do you think one page will be enough for this formula in terms of increasing level? I would guess not, but I, you can surprise me. Huh? You can surprise me. Depends on your notation. Depends if we're using Zhitomirsky normal form or not. <laughs> okay, here is this formula just for C for zero. Of course, I'm okay. This is kind of formula for C for zero, and you have a not more involved, but not less involved formula for the other coefficients of the time table. If somebody needs it, then for this organization, they are also checked and tested for years. Look up to the good. Uh, I will miss the email to you if you, uh, if you ask. Okay, again, the parameters of the heuristic matrix TIJ are not other fifteen numbers, but the relations between them uh, involved, they do not change uh, this, uh, this formula. So, in the case of 530, I'll remember what is this one, uh, let's say one and let's just see. Uh, so this 530 algebra are defined by uh, what I call reduced arithmetic matrix is the last two columns of the arithmetic matrix. Still the formulas in terms of six uh, edges uh, of this matrix can, uh, are not much simpler than this formula. But if you use, of course, if you use a, one of normal forms, final normal forms for reduced arithmetic, then the formulas are very simple. Uh, well, except except the case of two uh, normal form with two with two uh, with two parameters, but then uh, this uh, CIJ is a content of, uh, as well can be well characterized. But anyhow, it is what is very easy to make it here zero. Really, really in a normal form for reduced probabilistic tensor with uh, uh, here zero. Just make it, and then we obtain much simpler formula. Here is all for all coefficients of the Cartan. Uh, of the Cartan tensor. Well, and somebody, uh, and it is a way to tensor. Oh, it's much better. Huh? It's, it's factorizable. It's much better. It's much yeah, better. Yeah, yeah. Uh, by the way, you see, if E is equal to 3C in this yeah. form, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this guy accepts C for zero. Very good. Excellent. I equal to zero. Uh, well, but, but this part, I know a priori. How I know this a priori? Because this is, is, is equal to 3C, is one of the cases. Uh, what I, in this case, uh, if you remember from the lecture, see what I call special reduced characteristic matrix, and I know that a special uh, reduced characteristic matrix uh, uh, is a, with this property, uh, then the endowed five dimensional algebra is a job, self algebra of some seven dimensional job algebra uh, of two to five distribution, which has always the time tensor or zero uh, or uh, plus minus x1, uh, x1 to the four. And we see, you see lots of cases when Cartan tensor is zero, uh, that is the distribution is flat. For example, uh, you can take this, uh, uh, these parameters related like this, and you, uh, and you have flat distribution. So there are many, many ways. Uh, it's really uh, very nice, very, very nice. Uh, yeah. Okay, so, and this is the end of my tutorial. Everything what I said in my lectures and in tutorial uh, is published. And same thing, uh, only when it's published. Here is when it's already established. Am I right that Borja Krublikov, or me, of course, and Pavel Novosky are the editors of the Greek seminars? Okay, they are published here. Uh, so today or tomorrow, I will correct a few people's obvious people's I found as you uh, send you the tutorial along these uh, lectures, which is also people's corrected. Well, uh, it is most wanted, it was the most wanted tutorial. It was, to be honest, a bit hard to repair everything as that because it is Zoom and I had to speak with people, you know, physically uh, by Zoom, it's very difficult. Uh, uh, well, but anyhow, I did my best, it was not hard. Uh, I promised more tutorials, this is the most wanted, but you also what, probably you can have questions about this that I want to be more detailed. But these calculations, though they are, you can read them and you can do something if you. Uh, do something like a student does for a job, then 
אני מוציא את זה בפנצה, הביאה לי, הביאה לי סימפל, ובת פוליטיאס, ומיש אלפו, אז את רוקיץ, I have a table, with your wishes about tutorials, but maybe after these tutorials, so you will change your mind a bit about a mother topics. In any case, for further tutorial, please email to me. Please do not disturb Omid, just email to me and specify what you are interested in, and we will do it by Zoom, but now Zoom will be hosted by me. Uh, just informally, we will think how to do it. It depends on topic, it depends on how many people are interested in this uh, topic. Well, and within uh, this mini course of tutorial, it me to thank a lot of the organizer and all the listeners because it was very useful for me and I'm very thankful for your participation, for your questions, for just that you listen to this. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, perhaps maybe I just wanted to ask like if uh, for 10 minutes we can have like a formal question time and then after 10 minutes, after 10 minutes we can have more informal so that people can leave in case. Yeah, I have two little questions. Yeah, sure. Uh, so first one is at page 29. Page 29. I'm going up to page. Yeah, it's here. So you mean the cut-down tensor comes from the degree three term? Yeah. So this it is quasi homogeneous part of degree three, which means that A, I, J are functions, quasi uh, homogeneous functions of degree four. Uh, of degree four, uh, I... Yeah, I, because... Uh, ah, no, 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 sorry. Uh, Sorry, of, uh, of degree six, yes, uh, of degree six, because L4 and L5 uh, have a degree, degree minus. minus three. So okay. you remember that L1 and L2, have, this is symbol, L1 and L2 have degrees, uh, quasi homogeneity uh, degree minus one. Therefore, they are in bracket minus two. The next brackets, which are L4 and L5, minus three. And here we have three, so so A I J are uh, are homoge are quasi homogeneous of degree uh, six, uh, but after that. So why not the five? Remember that, but remember that uh, I didn't repeat it. But we normalize this uh, A I J. Yeah, we did a lot of normalizations. Yeah. Uh, we normalized it. Uh, because here, uh, to this form, uh, this is how we norm normalize it. And now, uh, here, F uh, has uh, is positive homogeneity of degree four, because this method is positive homogeneous of degree three. Okay, so my question is, I, I, I heard somewhere that this cardon tensor should be degree five. Is it, is it true? Sorry? So I, uh, I, I doubt so whether the cut-on tensor could be degree five, not six. Five or six for what? Uh, I, well, I... So attention, so uh, cut-on, so we have to uh, fix definition. So with respect to weights uh, one, one, two, three, three, cut-on tensor is an invariant, in, first invariant in classification of uh, of uh, three jets with respect to these weights. Now, if we are speaking about usual filtration, there is homogeneity with respect to one, 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 these weights, then it is the first invariant in the classification of five. Uh, yeah, so you mean in the three jets with your new uh, weight, it should be degree six, right? Yeah, right, but, but you should understand. Uh, you should not forget that uh, uh, about quasi homogeneity, even with respect to weights all one, uh, well, uh, quasi homogeneity of degree 10 of a vector field with respect to weights all one means that the coefficients of vector field have uh, degree 11, right? Okay. okay. Uh, this one has to be 
attention at this point. Okay, thank you. And uh, another question, I guess, on page 21. For what? 21, page 21. Well, I don't hear you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Page 21. Ah, 21. Yeah, I'm here. So here you mentioned another normalization, another pre pre normal form is uh, yeah the, another which is good which respects this yeah. So uh, my question is, does this pre normal form uh, respect some other group uh, conjugate to this group? No, well, yeah, we, you know, if we want that it, uh, well, you know. See, well, first thing, the fact that it doesn't respect doesn't mean that we cannot work with it. Because just what happens if we apply quasi homogeneous degree zero symmetry, then we do not have, we will not have this normal form anymore. We will have some other terms. We can kill these other terms. It will change in a certain way. This will be properly known you know, X1, X2. So we will have a certain action. And we can deal with this action, but in this action will be rather unpleasant. If we want, uh, in for my tender, so it was, uh, it respected, uh, and, and so this action was very simple. Uh, well, now here, if you want, uh, if you want this uh, normal form, this mod symbol, and which respects this action, then you have to change. Then you have to change here. But people who started with this mod symbol. Uh, they prefer, uh, probably, they prefer to have uh, a distribution expressed in Monge form. And this is a Monge form. But Monge form is not Monge form, whatever is Monge form. Uh, it is, uh, it is, this is Monge form, right? If I put here any function, it, it will be Monge form. But Monge form is, it doesn't respect this guy, what to do? It doesn't respect it because it's, uh, it's not symmetric, it's not like one of three, it doesn't respect this guy. Everything here is not symmetric. You know, it is conceptually again, conceptually I say yes, practically not. But practically not because uh, doing the stuff like symmetries, and we are all interested more in symmetries and more common symmetries, uh, uh, all global forms should be also maximally symmetric. This is uh, not a symmetrical statement, but, but a statement. Uh, Okay, I, I see. Yes, lack some symmetry. Maybe. Okay, enough for me. Thank you. M Mish, I, I, I would like to ask you. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. So first of all, well, if, if you're going to revisit your slides and do some corrections. Sorry? On the first place where V1 appears, it is like deviation of a generator and new potent approximation. That's the difference. And in the page which we are looking now, that's actually a generator of, of, of distribution. Uh, as the same on the page 15, it's actually a generator of distribution. But at the very beginning, it was deep. What is it on page 15? So if you go to the very begin beginning where V1 appeared, no, not here. The day, the, that's fine. That, that's just generators of distribution. But if you go some, I don't know, page three or five. Preliminary form number number one. Number one, yeah, it's very simple. It is very simple. Uh, no, no, claim one. Maybe, maybe, maybe one more per page, per page uh, back. Yes, yes. So this V1 is no generator, V1 and V2, right? So here. No, they, they are not generator. It is just it is it, all the time it's here, I, I defined L, L equivalence uh, for pairs of vector fields. So this vector fields V1, V2 are not generators of distribution. Yeah, that's confusing, but right? Generators that's distribution, we have to add N1 to V1 and N2 to V2. Right, so basically you can say that what's this written here, it's V1 minus N1 and V2 minus, minus N2. Yeah, no, well, probably it's better to write, to write in this way because, no, I see. Okay, I well, my, okay. my notation here are not perfect because you confuse V1, V2 with generators. But from this, starting from this place for several slides, uh, five or six slides, uh, seven slides, uh, V1, V2 is just uh, starting from here. Uh, yeah. 
Right. Okay. Okay. Two pairs of vector fields. If you do it, it's better to correct. Two pairs of vector fields. Yeah. Are yeah. LNP one. Probably. I had to denote the pair not by V1, V2, no, not the computer generator, but somehow else. W1, and, W2, or W2. And that was remarkable. And I also have a question to you. So you explained to us uh, the normal form of five quasi jet. Right? There was W, W1. Five quasi jets uh, with respect to, uh, no, five jets uh, not quasi. It's five not quasi. Just in step with, uh, no, oh, W1, W2, those things. Yeah, yeah. Uh, later. <coughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. All right, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you oh, yeah, fine. So then this is with respect when all weights are equal to one. Yeah, and uh, five jets. Mm -hmm. Well, or, 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 or like six jets of the coefficients, actually, right? Or six jets of the coefficients, right? Yeah. Now, uh, have you looked to the next jet? Well, six or seven, uh, depending on how we count, right? Yes, that's a good question. I also want to ask a question. Yes. Have you have you looked to the the, the, the well, invariants from the next jets? From the next jet? Yes. I well, think so because Misha promised promised that you can do a classification of homogeneous models, so you should do. I've done this, I think. No, well, okay, homogeneity it is, we do not need much uh, uh, deep invariant. Maybe W, you see it? this blue W. Mm -hmm. This is, this is uh, uh, okay, this, no, this W participates here. This W. So what, what next? Uh, what next? For, for the next guy? But what do I mean by next? Which, uh, so this part is homogeneous with respect to all ways one of degree four now you mean of degree five yes yes all this function g as you see is homogeneous with respect to always one of degree four yes and, and i think that the, 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 the calculation for degree five yes 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 because there shall be uh part of the big cartan curvature over there ah cartan geometry Cartan geometry is uh, <laughs> when, you, when we normalize degree five with respect to weights one. How you know that, that this is namely Cartan geometry and this is Cartan curvature? Huh? Cartan curvature because because there are more components, right? It's only fifteen here. Oh. Others in higher jets. I see. I see, Dennis. Okay, so the, the okay, other... so. Uh, so you already do me happy according to this frame. Yes, yeah. I, I, Dennis is not completely yeah. happy, right? Yeah, good. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, quite happy. Uh, I didn't uh, calculate, but I, but I can uh, calculate. So you know what happens. Uh, so for uh, for generic Cartan tensor, uh, at least uh, with uh, uh, four roots, but maybe for more generic, uh, maybe even three roots, we can completely. Uh, Factorize, uh, factorize by this, uh, all this part as, as explained by this stuff, uh, this five dimensional, uh, this, this five dimensional stuff, two dimensional part here, one dimensional here, two dimensional here. After this, after this, all is invariant. So we have uh, just to write uh, this invariant. In order to write this invariant, okay, but it is for generic Cartan tensor. In order to write this invariant, we have to go to my Idea, it is not in this slide. Uh, I will join them, but look at my idea. There are generators, and look what is the generators. Uh, what are homogeneous functions of the deep part? And that's it. Yeah, it would be nice to see actually, uh, like because yeah, of so the... these are these functions belong to my idea. This function G uh, is uh, a general function in my idea homogeneous is a vector always one of degree four. Now you have just to write in the that's idea fine. of degree of degree five. So it will be, I can say you what it will be. It will be degree five homogeneous polynomial here uh, plus z times degree four polynomial plus z squared degree three polynomial uh, here plus can well, and, uh, instead of this guy, it will be the same guy, multiple, but x1 squared 
or x1, x2, or x2 squared. So instead of these two guys, it will be the same, but instead of x1 and x2, there will be x1 squared, x1, x2, and x2 squared. And also this guy, we multiply it by or by x1 or, or by x2. It seems that this all the parts. So we can write them explicitly. I can write it in five minutes explicitly. Okay, okay. Good. Oh, okay, can, can I ask you? Uh, sure, yeah. I, I, yes, uh, it's more related actually to the very beginning to uh, slide number three. Three? Right. Yeah. Number three. This one? Yeah. Mm, uh, up, one more up. Yes, I mean, I actually, uh, like interested it's pro it's not a question but sort of so do do, do you see what i'm writing now yeah i see you yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah so th this is like this formula right so this operator i mean it, it's it's the most important operator in your theory right exactly so, so like i i would be interested sort of understand the relation to this operator like which which appears in in what 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 are you writing now I i'm writing it. the the operate the the co-boundary operator for in the cartan prolongation and well, it, looks like, it looks like it looks like this 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 two operators must have like must this be this operator same. has a very simple canonical meaning it, it is the image of this operator uh, is the tangent space uh, to the orbit of uh, the symbol symbol we take the orbit of the symbol with respect to equivalence the image of this operator is the tangent space to the orbit. Well, orbit is infinite dimensional, but we are working in infinite dimensional space. The image of the is simply the tangent uh, space to the orbit at the identity, at the identity. Now, this operator itself, uh, it's a linearization of the action uh, of the group. The, the group, what it does, we have a group of formation of the symbol. So the symbol, is, uh, we make, we make a local diffeomorphism applied to the symbol and we multiply it by a matrix. This is a pseudo group, infinite dimensional group. It acts. It's uh, uh, well, but now we are taking linearization of this action as identity. And, uh, and that's it. So forget, for example, about H. Forget about H. Assume that we are classifying just a pair of vector fields, not a distribution. Then, uh, so this. This operator is what is just the lead bracket of Z. Uh, of Z is uh, say we are even simpler. We have one vector field. Uh, you see, we have one vector field. You know, uh, well, so there is no difference conceptual between for one vector field there will be will be an operator which brings uh, which brings a vector field n to its lead bracket is vector field Z. That's it. So what is the lead bracket? Of a vector field with n. It is the linearization of the action uh, of group of local diffeomorphisms uh, uh, at the identity. Well, so this are uh, everything what I pronounced is without any coordinates, it's absolutely canonical. It is a canonical operator. It is a canonical uh, canonical operator, but uh, you can here, take here any n1 and n2. Okay. Anyway, I mean, I, I maybe it's like a question for. Uh, I mean, it's it's not related to in gen. It's it's related to this uh, general question why about the relation between this normal form approach and Tanaka approach because like in Tanaka in no, in your normal form approach you use this operator L n, and in the Tanaka approach you we use we one uses. Uh, co-boundary we, 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 we will speak about, about this 
And yes, I mean, so I think that like we... this this link is not well understood. I think it's something that should be explored. No, and there are no, certainly a lot of good things to do. To some to some word, and maybe you are right that it is. I mean, I, I want to understand what is like, so F is like a degree I uh, no, well, in the morphism, like here. And so here, what what is the relation? Like, it should be somehow, on, so here you have like two parts, Z and H. H, like you, you do, you apply this operator at every step, right? It's like you actually consider the, right. the degree I part, right? Yeah, yeah. And so, like H is so certain homogeneous of degree I, probably H is like F, but I don't understand what is Z then. Well, no, you know, H uh, comes from here just because for me, problem of classification of, uh, of two, three, five distributions is problem of classification of pairs of vector fields define up to this change of values multiplication by matrix H. And that's it. No, I, I think that this formula is is general. It's not you, you can apply it not only for two for I mean of course like yeah, you will have it's like very general indeed. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. I mean but, here you have N1 and two, but I mean it's it's general formula that you can apply for any distribution so maybe even... no, no, not only for any distribution for but, but, any object any objects in mathematics it is formula but, for no, any, no, any for... filtered structures with, uh, uh, for, with for any, okay may I make another uh, no but there is a big difference uh, with filter you know. carton structure because in this case you deal with functions but in in the in the Misha talk or in the Poincaré normal form you deal with just polynomials at the origin. It's just, it's not functional. It's just Taylor series, truncated Taylor series. So the link with co-boundary operator is probably not direct or not like one to one. I don't think there is a direct link like this. So, so the link so, uh, uh, polynomials either. also can be considered uh, like map symmetric. Map. Do you see this uh, electronic board? Yeah. Yes. It is absolutely general. This is something we have some web, some vector space M. Or how do you M? And we have a group G, which acts on M. Pseudo group. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we have. Lee algebra. So G is exponent of L. Okay. Infinite dimensional algebra. G is infinite dimensional group. No, think about just L about vector fields uh, and G about local DP amorphism. And then let's take uh, A in L. Let's take exponent of TA. It's already in G. Apply, apply it to some M. This is another vector space. And differentiate by t and when t is equal to zero. And that's it. This is the operator. So we obtain an operator which sends an element of V algebra to an element of M, right? And it, it depends on L small. So this is an operator which can be denoted. You mean to the tangents, uh, to element of the tangents? Please. Yeah, so this is an operator which can be denoted L or how? Mm. Oh, no, no, okay, T, that will be T because, okay, maybe 
algebra I will replace by A, algebra I will replace by L by A, the operator will be L. And it depends on this M. It depends on this M. So it M says- the point in M, capital M. It says, it says A element of the, it says the Lie algebra, yeah. A to M. It is a canonical, the, uh, absolutely universal definition. All what we need is a pseudo group uh, for which we have an algebra and exponential map. As soon as we have it, and we have it in all the problems we are speaking about, other than the problem, then we have this is absolutely general. And this is exactly uh, my case. In particular, it's my case. So for me, G is a group which consists of local diffeomorphisms and two by two matrices. Non singular, of course, and local diffeomorphism. It's the algebras. I think I didn't know here H, in order that it is not singular. The algebras is a, a consist of pairs of vector in Z and two by two matrix H, now arbitrary. Exponential map is well defined from here to mm -hmm. here. You can write that ODEs for that. So if, if there is no H, then P is just the flow of Z at time one. Uh, well, and uh, uh, M. Ah, yes, the space M is a space which consists of pairs of vector fields, V1, V2. And uh, M small in M is the symbol and one and two. So it is just a basic thing for all actions of all Felder groups as soon as you can exponential map. Not more than that. So I, I, I don't understand the notation. You, you actually differentiate the DDT, right? Then like- uh, Okay, so what, 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 you, what, what is you this? have written, it's not a map from A but to M, but it's map right, from right. A What to... is this? It is, it is a curve in M. It is a curve with them. No, it is, but you it, it, it is an up to the tangent space. You differentiate, no? I don't understand. You take derivative at t equal. Yeah, you are, you are right. It is better to write here instead of m. Uh, <clears throat> okay. The tangent uh, space. Ah, okay. So I see. So tangent you bar, actually right. you have you have the spare because you actually have like, like you well you you your transformation consists of a diffeomorphism and change of the basis, like no, feed, yeah, feedback, but, feedback uh, transformation. Yeah, you are right, yeah, yeah, should yeah. be something but not to M, but, but since my M is a pair of vector fields, uh, it is linear, mm. so I, I identify with it with it something but. Probably your M, is, okay. Any. No, M are vector fields. Precisely pairs of vector fields. Okay. Yes. No, I mean, I just want to understand what is it. Yes, you have this extra H, like this extra change of the basis. Okay. Anyway, yes, it's it's a question. Oh, it's not, it was not a question. It's just like, that should be some relation. It's clear between these two operators, but Anyway. I think it's an excellent question, but probably it's not well understood yet. So it's something to to think about. Yes. yes. Okay. Not, okay. No, so for, I, I, get, I I believe that uh, Boris Dubrov and Boris Kruglikov and Denis they, they might be interested in this as well. I guess. No. Well, uh, <laughs> I I think that uh, uh, that you can, that like me uh, you have a feeling that. Uh, uh, that everything uh, in this part of Tanaka theory which corresponds to this normalization to a function of G2 and so on. And in my approach, uh, that we have a certain uh, isomorphism between two languages. Uh, uh, well, uh, uh, to understand well this is isomorphism, sometimes it's uh, very useful because it's additional insight uh, 
to both approaches. Sometimes it more, it's not more than a bureaucracy. Uh, you convince me that uh, in this case, uh, it might be useful, more than bureaucracy, that it might give uh, insight uh, to uh, both approaches. No, I mean, in, I mean, you will, un, you may actually, you know what to expect, to expect. I mean, if if some some cases were already treated by one series and it, if you will have this is no, well, it depends uh, it depends on a problem so as you see uh, so my purpose is to uh, is to get uh, the answers uh, in terms uh, not not only i want to do that you see general series and so on but also i want to compute uh, uh, compute the things to the end to get uh, you know, numbers to get complete formulas as simple as possible. Uh, so for this case, my language is uh, well, appropriate enough, you probably will agree. Uh, but uh, containing some theorems to depends on sort of theorems. Some theorems also, general theorems come from this language. But, uh, uh, but of course, uh, the more, no, what, what to speak about? The more languages you know, the better. It concerns not only mathematical languages, but philological languages. So to know English and French is much better than to know only English or only French. There is no doubt about that. Okay. Anyway, thank you.